Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode 5 of 5. You have arrived to the last episode on asteroids and asteroid mining. Asteroids, we've talked about what they are, how to get them, how dangerous they can be. We've talked about capturing and mining them, but today we're going to talk about landing a person on one, which is an actual plan. So if we plan to go and grab these space rocks in the near future, and then we plan to mine them, it might not be the best plan to just grab the little ones, right? We might have to grab some big ones. We might have to send people out there to do the mining. But before we do that, is any of this even legal? <laughs> That's actually questionable. The Outer Space Treaty, also known as the Treaty on Principles Governing the Activities of States in the Exploration and Use of Outer Space, including the Moon and Celestial Bodies, Outer Space Treaty, says that you can't own a piece of space. You cannot own a celestial body, a country. They can't do it. It's not allowed under that treaty. But the Space Act of 2015 says that U.S. citizens can engage in exploration and exploitation of space resources. But the United States has no sovereignty over anything that they are mining. So you can't own the asteroid, but you can take the stuff. Which makes me think of like StarCraft, you know, you can't own the planet Char, but you can send your drones and get gas and minerals and construct additional pylons and stuff. Whatever. So after the legality is settled, which probably won't happen until people start going out and grabbing them, what happens then? Do we colonize? Do we keep people on asteroids? A popular sci-fi topic is the idea of colonizing our solar system. You know, it's what's happening on the TV series The Expanse. It's a cold war between Mars and Ceres and the belt and wealthy cities of Mars get their water from ice miners in the belt. But the miners are living in decayed oxygen-starved habitats. Honestly, I've never seen this show, but it sounds really great. Thanks for writing about it, Donna, our associate producer for Test Tube Plus. What would it be like to live on Ceres, though? Ceres is big, but big for an asteroid. I mean, back when it used to be one. Now that it's a dwarf planet, it's kind of small. It's the diameter of Texas, has the surface area of India. And because it's that small, the gravity is only 3% or less than Earth's, which means it's got no atmosphere, it's got no weather, it's got nothing to protect you from interspace radiation. You would just see black and it would have extreme shifts in temperature, negative 100 Celsius during the day, negative 225 Celsius at night. And even the difference between standing in someone's shadow and standing in the sun could be drastic. Not to mention a year on Ceres is like almost five Earth years, 4.6 Earth years. It's not ideal. But Ceres could be good for harvesting water. Ceres could contain, by some estimates, one-tenth of the total water in all the Earth's oceans, or five times more water than Earth at 200 million cubic kilometers of fresh water. So if we can get to Ceres, we might be able to mine it for that resource. In another show, Space 1999, they used asteroids as ships. Full disclosure, I did not watch The Expanse, which is currently airing, but I did watch Space 1999. I saw it on Laserdisc. My dad really liked it. Space 1999 had asteroids as ships. Basically, they would put people on an asteroid and kind of push it out into space. And one study says that astronauts could ride an asteroid to Mars. The benefit there is it's an alternative to building better shielding and better spacecraft to stop radiation from getting to the astronauts. You just tunnel into an asteroid, use the asteroid's orbit to take you there, it saves you on fuel, and then you just pass close enough to a planet to hop out, get to your destination. According to the study, an asteroid taxi would need to be about 33 feet wide, to provide enough shielding. And of course, would need to pass close enough to both planets to make it worthwhile. But real talk, to be honest, this whole series we've been talking about mining asteroids and grabbing them and going out and doing all of this incredible stuff with them, but we have no idea how to actually do all this. Planetary Resources says, that they'd land a swarm of scraping robots on an asteroid with barbed, grippy feet, which could vacuum up the regolith of shoot it back to Earth, but come on. It's frickin' insane. You don't even know what an asteroid looks like up close. We just landed on a comet for the first time last year. We don't know definitively what the surface of an asteroid would be like, what it would be like to mine, and how all that would work. We don't know how to mine one. We don't know even how to capture one yet. And that's why NASA and all of these other companies are working on them. But to do that, 
They have to practice. They have to go out and capture some asteroids. They have to run some experiments and figure out if these things can be useful for us. Because if they can, like we've said already, they could completely change space travel for all of us. We've been looking at asteroids through telescopes since Giuseppe Piazza discovered them in 1801. But other than knowing where they are, even now, more than 200 years later, we're not 100% sure what they are all the time. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode on asteroids and asteroid mining. If you have any other suggestions for your future episodes, let us know down in the comments. And also, tell us if you have any other cool shows that I should be watching, because apparently I need to get on those shows. Because that show, The Expanse, sounds pretty cool. Also, come find us on Twitter. You can find the show at TestTube. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. And thanks for watching TestTube Plus again. We'll see you next time.